15 seconds. We'd like you all in your seats in 15 seconds. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we are back. And I pass it to Clyde. All right, y'all. Is it me or is it really hot in this room? All right, all right. Just want to check in. Acknowledge. We're hot in general. We know that. Somos caliente, right? But it's also hot in the room. So, you know, I think what we want to be mindful of is uh, not being hot and bothered, right? Uh, in terms of uh, what's to come next. And, um, you know, this wasn't, uh, I, maybe it was easy for some folks, but, you know, I was kind of walking around and trying to check in as we're doing our timekeeping thing, and I heard a little frustration here and there, and I also heard laughter. I uh, just want to acknowledge all of it, right, because uh, what's to come next is we'll ask for you guys to present your respective visions and strategies, um, and then we're going to do some coalescing and some consolidation. And this is gonna enable us uh, towards the, the later part of the afternoon to then get really concrete about our own individual access points into what we identify as a community. Does that make sense? Are we yeah. pretty clear about that? Cool, cool. So uh, I'm gonna start with A, and that's advocacy and ask you to come up and present your vision and strategy, and we'll start on this end, and we'll move forward this way, okay? Yes, put it up. And the full group, yeah, I'd like to see who was up there. Yeah, everybody, come on up. And we, you know, you, you, got, you, got, you know, it's brief, it's three to five minutes, but I think you should be okay with that. Um, we had a very spirited conversation in our session, and in spite of Mario Ernesto, because he's so shy, uh, <laughs> we were able to engage him in conversation. So, um, the advocacy uh, touched on a, a number of issues, but uh, and topics uh, with respect to um, what we thought about advocacy and what the advocacy agenda would be. More specifically, however, our vision statement is that by in the next 20 to 30 years, we want to develop a strong community of advocates that includes artists, the arts community, as well as our audiences, that understand the role of advocacy and the importance of advocacy with a very specific advocacy agenda addressing issues of equity. Uh, we, come, we came up with a few uh, strat uh, strategic actions that we are suggesting and recommending. One is that we uh, provide training through strategic alliances on advocacy and the use technology to make this training more widely available to communities. Just like we did the sessions around the country today, the training on advocacy be conducted using technology so we don't have to convene with respect to doing that training. And those strategic alliances can be such organizations as um, Americans for the Arts, who has a political action committee, which is with the Arts Action Fund, and advocacy is a strong part. NALAC, the National Association of Latino Arts and Culture, which has an advocacy institute that brings people to Washington. But again, using technology, we can not limit it to those individuals who come to particular cities to get that training. As important as it is to develop a, a cadre of advocates, it's also important that when we convene that we make advocacy part of our agenda at these convenings. And that we can include those into our agenda so that it's never an afterthought, but it's actually part of our thinking as well as some of our planning sessions with respect to advocacy agendas and the importance and, and demonstrating that advocacy is an important role that we undertake, recognizing that we wear many hats, but without the advocacy, we can't change the agenda. Um, we also uh, are rec we're recommending or suggesting that, um, that we also need to promote Latino artists and our, our artists themselves and as individual artists and, and the work that they create and that that needs to be promoted and developing alliances around the country so that work in particular that is maybe done in festivals doesn't just stay at that festival. That more knowledge and awareness of the work that's being created by Latino playwrights 
and artists or ensembles needs to be seen and be promoted. And one way of doing that is to promote it through alliances of artistic directors, both of Latino theaters and non-Latino theaters. Because we really, need to, we really need to advocate for that and promote that. Publishing is obviously one aspect of it, but making people and artistic directors or even literary managers aware of these plays is without that awareness and appreciation, they're not gonna necessarily produce or present the work. And lastly, we recognize that the, the Latino Theater Commons here at Emerson is not a program and it's not an organization. However, we also believe and know that Emerson is planning to develop a campus in Los Angeles that will have a program there. That we believe that that particular campus have a focus on Latino work and, Latino, and the Latino Theater Commons be a program, a signature program of that campus, that it makes sense to do that. And we, and we make that recommendation in the spirit that we know that we have been welcomed here by the president and that Emerson has made a commitment to such convenings and gatherings, but that an, an initiative or an effort or a program may be more fully developed and supported as a program of that campus. And that demonstrates the commitment not only of the president, but of the president and the institution, but actually of the entire educational system. It can be a beacon for others to follow suit. <laughs> so that's what it is. Anything that you want to add? Anyone? Yes, a message. <laughs> I have a message for Luis Valdez. Si se pudo. Thank you. Oh, and one last thing that it's very important, I'm just looking at David, is that very important that we, rec that we uh, connect local initiatives with respect to anything that we do to promote artists with national m movements or national organizations, that we can't just stay local, that we have to be engaged at the national level and regional level to make certain that our voices and our efforts are being heard and recognized throughout the ecosystem. Thank you. Once again, the advocates are advocating already, so give it up for them, thank you. Um, so uh, technology was one of the things I heard or the use of technology, and uh, I think then it's appropriate that we move to uh, another strategy group, and that is Cafe Onda. So if the Cafe Onda group can stand up and model what uh, we just saw, where you put your easel pads front and center and you give us a report back and then you post them up right here on the wall. Thank you. Hello, this is Cafe Onda. Ow! Uh, so we're gonna, I'm gonna read the, uh, the vision statement and then we're gonna talk about our three pillars of that vision statement. Um, the Cafe Onda will be the online hub for expression, advocacy, and networking for Latino theater. And I'm gonna hand it off to our representatives of each of the pillars. All right, so. The three of us will share in the reading of this element. And uh, this is Georgina, our clown. Um, first, first element of expression is... Do you hear that? <laughs> Elements of play. Uh, Steve, Steven Tyler is Peter Pan as icon. That was my contribution. Uh, podcasts, gotta have podcasts, gotta have a voice for creativity, collabo writing, uh, design work by designers should be on this, including stop motion, animation, and videos. There should be some poetry. We gotta have a calendar, an interactive calendar where everybody can put up their events, their gatherings, all their fu you know funding deadlines, all stuff like that. Um, hyperlinks featuring tweets. Okay, um, I think what's left is Instagram, 15 second video reviews. 
inviting artists from other disciplines to participate with us. Inviting visual artists to make work based on Latino plays. You want me to do it? Yes. All right. So, second pillar, advocacy, which is what we've been doing. <laughs> this is great. Um, so, we've talked about creating a, a, essentially making the website a giant protocol for dramaturgs, a place to put work for others to find. Uh, we want to include sampling of different disciplines of work. Uh, we want to have uh, excerpts from plays so we can feature playwrights and they can put up uh, little 10 minute samples and if anybody wants to like get the rest of the play, they can contact the particular agents or the playwrights themselves. Uh, we also want to have a unified voice speaking out, responding quickly to uh, events that, uh, that affect the Latino theater community. Uh, such as, you know, Michael Kaiser, Shakespeare Theater, all that stuff. Um, a monthly hashtag, Cafe Onda Conversations. So a monthly discussion online to talk about particular questions or issues uh, concerning specifically the Latino theater community. And we also we want to have a, a, uh, a regular scholarly presence. So we have reports from the field from scholars, not just from, uh, from universities, but from uh, educators. Uh, uh, community organizers, social workers, and so on and so forth. And now I'm going to pass it off to networking. Great. So as networking, uh, we want to have Café Onda be the place where we can find each other and find each other's work. Um, so as such, it would be a central place where we could have dynamic profiles of Latino theater makers. Uh, so if you're a playwright, if you're a director, if you're a designer, if you're a dramaturg, uh, you could post a profile so we could know who you are, where you're based, what you're interested in, so that we can connect with each other and collaborate. So for example, we can identify each other by practice or by region or city. So having all those filters available. This could be a place for a new play map for all Latino Latina productions, uh, a place where we could have a production database. So, you know, as this timeline behind us represents, you know, sometimes productions happen that we're not aware of. And so the scholars don't know about what we're working on to then write about it. You know, dramaturgs working in institu institutions who want to be able to advocate for a play can then look it up and say, you know, it's been produced as an amazing theater that, that, you know, we may not be aware of. You know, we should be doing this play um, and have it, have it be a place where all this incredible research and work, videos, dramaturgical articles, uh, you know, all kinds of information can be posted and shared and have a life beyond those productions. Um, have this be a place for a dynamic calendar for productions and deadlines. So if I know that you're having a, pr a production coming up in Chicago in three months, I can plan to be there and support you as you do your work or as we're getting re ready to apply for, uh, for awards or for potential funding opportunities um, to have this be a place where that can live um, and also uh, as we talked about you know having this be uh, a place for a scholarly spotlight so we can share our work with scholars um, and have a conversation all right so just one last thought about this is very quick uh, which is like, uh, you know, because I am the, so right now I'm the editor of Cafe Ona, but I use that term very loosely. I, I want to express and emphasize the fact that we are all the curators. So, uh, you know, if there's anything of particular interest or topic or things that you want to share, you can talk to any and all of us, including myself, and pitch your ideas. And we pay you to, to write these articles because we believe that your time and your words are worth a little something for, for, for the cause of Latino theater. Do you want to say something? Also, um, a couple of elements we didn't, we didn't mention is 15-second um, uh, Instagram video reviews that anyone that goes to see a show can create. And, uh, and we could also be a platform for um, your little 15-second <laughs> sort of commentary on a show that you've seen. <laughs> and then in the future, Café on that TV. Thank you guys. What, what we're hearing thus far, and we gotta, we're gonna encourage one of our stances of active listening, but what I'm hearing as I listen is, you know, some, some very broad kind of uh, longer term initiatives and some really immediate things. So that last thing we heard was 
really immediate. That's what you can do. You can go to a show if you, you know, use this thing already and you're on Instagram or Vine and you can do that and you can post it and you can hashtag it. So, you know, that's actually going to be the next phase, but we need y'all to listen so that you can help us kind of begin to consolidate some of this, uh, some of these brilliant ideas. So we're going to ask the next group to come up and we're going to stay with the C's and that's convening. Convenings, please get up and give us your love and give us your ideas and give us your thoughts. And I promise there's going to be a really fun break after all of this. I wanted to point out that we were told to write a sentence, so we did. <laughs> In the following, we wish to not do to others what has been done to us. We envision in 2046 a shift from us in our convening to a we, as our racial diversity and hybridity becomes realized. We envision convenings that are multi-generational with blurred geographic and perhaps metaphysical borders, <laughs> attended by thousands and blessed by our Latina president. Our strategies to organize locally, regionally, as we have, and nationally, as we are doing, to share knowledge and information and groups, but more significantly, building on the one-to-one -one that happened here and now and today. To utilize cultural centers and shared spaces and also the models of those shared spaces. We spoke about the Mexican-American <coughs> Cultural Center in Austin, for example, that it was a 30-year thing in the making between activists, community activists, uh, scholars, and La Raza itself for 30 years, and finally we got the city to pay for it. <laughs> that we want to use those models over and over again. And LATC, another good example, getting the civic support but not the dominance of them deciding how we do it. Three, uh, schedule yearly national covenings uh, that rotate locations as in the four corners that we started today here and include universities and other organizations as we have, but more significantly, continue the multi-generational, almost guild idea of the one-to-one -one transference of knowledge that's so important by standing there with our elders together. And last but not least, we make a promise now to really do this. <laughs> Give it up to conveners for actually listening to our instructions. Thank you. Thank you for sentences and other things. So uh, next, I'd like the scholars to come up. Scholars, please come up. Give the scholars some love. everything they did, so we're done. <laughs> there is amazing crossover. It, it's, it's fascinating how we're all thinking on the same lines. The scholars group followed directions, <laughs> and we, we wrote, would you read it? The, our vision. Any one of you, okay. read it. Um, scholarship and documentation. We added the, documentation because that was supposed to be in the program. We forgot. Right. So we're interested in scholars in theaters and artists in university. Permeability. Patricia, would you read this one? The mic. The mic. Hi. I'm waiting for that Latina president. 
Um, so number one, creating networks between artists and scholars. And we thought of two ways to do that. The first is to fundraise to bring more Latino artists to scholarly conferences so we can have dialogues. The second is to build relationships with Latino theaters to foster residencies for scholars. Number two, um, you laugh, we're coming. <laughs> Um, and number two, to develop an interactive archive, probably electronic, for Latino theater. And that's following directions. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So, you know, there's a. Uh, I guess uh, like a meta narrative that's emerging, right? And, uh, and then we all get to do some uh, dramaturgy together, right? That's uh, you know, to keep the metaphor going. Um, so scholarship was mentioned, and scholarship mentioned networking. So how about we get networking up here next? Our moderator was the fabulous Richard Perez but he has ceded the microphone to me. Um, and I have to tell you, working with this uh, uh, ink um, has put the mancha de platano back in my hands. So, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, the one thing I want to acknowledge is, that, yeah, I know, <laughs> hey, from Puerto Rico, you know. Um, the one thing I want to acknowledge is that, in fact, there's a lot of cross-pollination between these uh, things that we were just asked to meet. Uh, obviously, networking is, is very related to advocacy, and Café Onda is going to play a key uh, part in what we are about to present to you. So I'm going to start with a vision. We acknowledge, as activists in the field, that there is abundance, networks, and access access and that we, through convening mentorships, open platforms and existing national programs to expand, support and illuminate Latinos in the American theater field. And these are the strategies, oops, misspelled, um, <laughs> to infiltrate existing national programs by deliberate participation. We love the word infiltrate. Uh, and again, you know, we, a lot of us started doing theater because we are activists. Uh, number two, identifying regional delegates that will help disseminate information to broaden our knowledge of each other's work and understanding of uh, 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 understanding of each other's work, available artistic resources and funding opportunities. So again, that identification is the second strategy. Uh, number three is l to basically leverage Cafe Onda to be a dynamic resource for connections and exchanges. So uh, there you have it, networking. So you may, you may have seen Ginan adding uh, little sheets of paper below here. And, and uh, he's, he's attempting to uh, coalesce around vision um, first, which is part of what we'll do once we get through all of this. And then we're going to kind of delve together into, into the strategies. Uh, so I just want to uh, keep saying that. So that was, that was networking. Uh, that was great. Thank you. Um, next up. We're gonna do what? What do we have over there? Mentoring. Help me out. Mentoring, and art making. Okay, so well, let's let's do uh, let's do mentorship next. Can we get the mentors up, please? Thank you. mentorship which is the sharing of knowledge and training and we had a 
really <laughs> profound conversation because uh, that's definitely something that all of us uh, feel that we want to be in service of is giving ourselves to uh, others and to uh, upcoming artists in the profession as mentors. But we also talked about, uh, the, I think the harder part of the conversation um, was uh, the fact that all of us also need mentors, even as we continue to develop and grow at the highest levels uh, that we aspire to in our careers. So I'm going to turn it over to my um, wonderful group members to describe a little bit about uh, what we came up with a, with our vision statement towards the future in thinking about mentorship as very much a tree with many branches. So rather than having a defined statement, we talked about the branches on the tree. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shoulder to cry. Human collaborator. Positive energy. Confidant. Love. Advocate. Ass kicker. Truth teller. Oh, leader. <laughs> Nurturer. Mutual respect. And now we're going to talk about our, um, our vision plan. We came up with a very defined sense of what we could do immediately today among everyone in the room. We felt it was very, very important that, that mentorship should go both, uh, that mentorship should be going both ways. Not only should we think of ourselves as mentors, but also as mentees. So we thought it would be great if everybody in this room walked out of here as a mentee and as a mentor. Even you, Senor Valdez. <laughs> Everyone, and we do, we do, we take that very, very seriously. Each and every one of us should look around the room. Who is that person that inspires you, and how can you open yourself up to inspire somebody else? It's imperative in order for this, for this communication to continue on into the future. Um, and that person does not have to be younger than you or older than you, depending on what you think of as a mentor or mentee. Um, and I also want to just plug one other thing in the voice of technology. Some of the old technology still works. Pick up a fucking phone. Yeah. <laughs> Number two. Oh, uh, the other thing that's come up during our, our stay here is that we really feel that we need a how-to. We need a workshop of best practices and case studies. So. Uh, Jose Luis, how did you get your board to give $15,000? Just, we need to know how that happens. <laughs> no, how, how did you get a play to this theater? We, we need instructions. We all feel like we're empowered. We need some more tools. So we'd love to do another convening where people show the ways that they've done it and we improvise on that. And then part three, we talked about what a national directory might look like if we could build a national directory where we uh, put down all the programs that are currently available, whether they're paid internships, unpaid internships, internships by other kind of design, uh, so that we could have a formalized place where people could We've heard the word networking, and then um, we want to be able to eventually see the establishment of a uh, development fund for mentorship, because paid mentorships are obviously very critical. But uh, I think in summation, the biggest thing we wanted to see was the cultivation of mentorship, not as something that some aspire to or some are doing, but that's an organic part of the work that we do. And here I'm reminded, you know, I want to quote Diane Rodriguez, because at the Encuentro, I thought that she said something really important in Los Angeles, and that was, she said that her goal is she walks through a door and opens it for others to follow through, and I think we're always looking for new doors to open, which is why we need to think about um, being mentors, but also seeking out mentors to help us in finding the next door to open. And, and we talked about short-term mentors, we all, but we also talked about the need for long-term mentors and a balance between the both. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Give it up for the air condition, it's on. Yeah, thank goodness. Okay. Um, so uh, next up, we're gonna ask that the art makers join us. Art makers, the art making group. So we are the dreamers, and we're also the storytellers, which is why this was really challenging for us. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we had some profound conversations, but I have to say that we're not as pragmatic as some of these, but that's okay, no judgment. Um, this is who we are. Uh, so um, I'm gonna ask, various people to read for us. Um, Rose, would you like to read our statement? We did come up with a vision statement. It took a while. It's a beautiful thing. Art making in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Luis Valdez. In the theater of Inglaktesh in 2046, the artist will be the most valued member of the community. I don't know what that word is. Ah, by reflecting stories where the community can see themselves. There you go. Okay. Uh, for. For the castles. The, okay. <laughs> the castles, institutions, each have a resident scholar, playwright, designer, director, and group of actors. Uh, to work together, collaborate on local, national, and international levels. Okay, so we had a very intense conversation. And the conversation was really about uh, theater of the future that, it, we, you know, we mentioned castles. Are, are, are the castles already burned then? And if they're not in 2046, because we had a much more practical conversation that it's only 30 something years away, right? So it's gonna look exactly the same. And if it's gonna look exactly the same, uh, some of us felt that maybe uh, if we were uh, really uh, members of a community inside of an institution. If we did have a scholar, if we did have, not a repertory, but we had actors that were essential members of an institution, that something would change in the way that we think about how we run theaters. So that was a little bit of that, yeah? <laughs> well, how about just to offer gender parity? Let me let uh, Josefina continue. <laughs> So one of the things that we see happening is that the structure of playwriting, for instance, won't be a male linear structure where it reflects a man's orgasm, right? Rising action, climax, resolution, they fall asleep, right? But it'll be more orgasmic, multi-orgasmic, where it spirals up, spirals down, and it'll be much more encompassing of female energy and female stories. There was just one, one, one more thing. We're still art making here, people. We're still art making. There's one more thing that, that uh, I think needs to be repeated, and that's something that Lupe Valdez said, which was uh, at the core of what we want to do as art makers is find a place where love and respect exists. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. 
Yeah. True humanity. Thank you. I was going to say a joke about the play, but not anymore. Um, so last but not least, festivals. Festival crew, please step up. Festival crew, to the mic. festivals and this was actually really exciting because we're talking about festivals not in 2046 but in 2014 and 2015 so it was very great to be working on projects that we know are actually going to happen so I'm going to talk about the Encuentro at LATC and then I'm going to hand it over to Lisa um, so for the Encuentro at LATC we also follow direction the vision our vision is through direct and respectful artistic encounters over a four-week period the Latina Latino Encuentro will celebrate and assess the level of artistic excellence of our field. The three strategies in which we want to use to engage and reach this vision is one, the collective and democratic selection of work, taking uh, into consideration companies, <coughs> bodies of work, uh, ensembles, touring productions, productions that have the ability to tour not only to LA but also beyond, and also urgency, the urgency of the work that needs to be seen. Strategy number two is thoughtful feedback in various playwright-driven um, and selected modes. So we talked a lot about the NAS and the format of feedback, uh, what was deemed brutal feedback. Um, and what we talked about, there's been a development of dramaturgy and forms of feedback in which playwrights themselves could talk about who they want to hear from and in what format they want to hear from, like the Lerman or, or something, different techniques to have feedback. And those sessions would happen in the morning after performance. And then in the afternoons, as Jose Luis mentioned, the creation of new work through shared methodologies, improvisation, and collaboration. So what was really exciting, because you know, I just was like, you know, thinking around about this in my head for a little while, and it was so great to get a group of people thinking about what this thing is gonna be in 2015. And we decided it was not gonna be a festival, it was gonna be a Latino play, a Latino new work carnival. Un carnival, ustedes saben, yeah? And so it's gonna be centered around eight pieces, eight, uh, not seven pieces, uh, each, uh, two from each of the uh, four directions. From two, 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 two. Centered around those projects. Um, but then we wanted to have, um, what, a one, we wanted to expose as many writers as possible. So we wanted to have a one minute play festival, a 24 hour theater festival. We wanted to have three directors, three Latino directors from around the country come and work with three groups of students over the course of the week and create a 15 minute theater piece. We wanted to have what we call um, the booths of the great uh, Latino theaters in Chicago. So each Latino theater in Chicago would have their own thing they could do, a 24 hour play, um, a site specific project, popcorn, a dunk, you know, I don't know, Lisa Cortes booth, a bobbing for plays. But we wanted to create a real sense of carnival around our work. We decided this is gonna be, what, what did uh, Richard Montoya say? No notes, no feedback, no notes, no notes. Just a celebration of our work in 2015 and then that will be the first seed of, I hope, a long history. All right. Great, and um, now I'm gonna check in with you guys. because We're gonna figure this out together, right? This is the comments, this is how we're doing it. Um, and not everybody listened to our instructions. <laughs> so we gotta remix a little bit. So, would it be helpful, this is a question to the group, to take a few minutes for all of you to come up here and to kind of span what's just been put out, because obviously you can't read it from where you're sitting, right? You've listened, but would it be helpful to kind of also now read each and every one and take a few minutes to do that? Because we have some time between now and our next break, and we can build that in. Is that helpful? Can I hear a, yeah. a consensus? Yes? Yeah. yes? yes. Folks want to do that? Yeah. Um, so let's do that. Take a few minutes, we're gonna give you five. 
to get up here and kind of just walk across this and take in, if you want to, take in what's been said from a strategy and a vision perspective. So as you guys are looking at the wall, you're looking also at what's similar, you know? What connects? What, 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 you know, where, where's, the, uh, where's the synthesis? Because we're gonna start our editing. We're gonna start narrowing some of this down. And then we're gonna, we're gonna make some decisions as a group. We got a couple of more minutes, folks. So just scan it, take it in, do a little reflection.
All right, y'all. We're going to ask that you uh, start gathering yourselves. Head back to your seats. Start quieting down. We have some work ahead. I'm gonna get out of the way. So, Kinan was uh, charged with doing something real specific. And that was to do a little uh, to, to, to model this essentially across vision. And not so much to say this is what it is, but to put it all together and read them as one so we can hear that out loud as a group. Kidan? So do we have everybody in the room? So as Clyde said, I'm going to just weave the narratives that have been created. I'm going to weave the visions that you have all created for us and just take it all in as a type of quilt. In the following, we wish to not do to others what has been done to us. We envision in 2046 a shift from us in our convening to a, a we as our racial diversity and hybridity becomes realized. We envision an effective understanding of advocacy and a strong group of advocates. We envision Cafe Onda as an online hub for expression, advocacy, networking for Latino theater. We envision scholars in the theaters and artists in the university. We envision convenings that are multi-generational with blurred geographic and perhaps metaphysical borders attended by thousands and blessed by a Latina president. <laughs> we acknowledge as activists in the field that there is abundance and access and that we network through convenings, mentorships, open platforms, and existing national programs to expand and support and illuminate Latinos in the American theater field. We envision collaborative thinking and the relationship building. We envision cultivation of a mentorship culture. We envision through direct and respectful artistic encounters over a four week period, the Latino Encuentro will celebrate and assess the level of artistic excellence of our field. We envision eight pieces representing the four directions in a carnaval of theater. In the theater of In La Quesh in 2046, the artist will be the most valued member of the community. By reflecting stories where the communities can see themselves, the castles and institutions each have a resident scholar, a resident playwright, resident designer, resident director, and a group of actors. We all work together to collaborate on local, national, and international levels. And we envision love and respect existing with artists at the center, creating multi-orgasmic, spiraling theater <laughs> in 2046. That's for all of us, and uh, I, I, I want to. Let's hear from Twitter. We want we want Twitter to check. We want the Twitter world to check in and chime in on this, and uh, get their feedback on what we're hearing so far. And and now we want to attempt, and it's going to be very difficult uh, to consolidate or begin to at least consolidate some of these strategies. But we're going to start with consolidating these groups. So we started off with eight. Advocacy, Cafe Onda, scholarship, networking, mentorship, art making, festivals, 
and convenings. So now, from you guys, we're gonna ask with some new easels and we're gonna note take here. Um, if we had to get this down to four, four, what would those four be? Maybe two are obvious. Cafe Onda and festivals. Networking. Advocacy is an obvious one. I mean, they're all obvious. I guess what we're after is what are the platforms we have that we know are already happening and can those things happen in the context of those platforms, right? So we know scholarship is a whole nother platform as well, correct? Can we agree upon that? Yeah. Um, we know that there's some festivals happening. Can we agree upon that? Yeah. We know that in many ways, convenings are a festival of ideas, of people gathering, correct? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. So can we perhaps, in the context of our goals for today, agree that convenings can happen in the context of festivals? In fact, what I heard from the carnival was that you literally remixed an idea on an idea. Correct, Lisa, and the fest and festival group, yeah. in terms of how you're thinking about uh, 2015. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have a platform in Cafe Honda that will support advocacy, expression, uh, no, advocacy networking. Networking. and networking. Advocacy and networking as a separate yeah. category. Diane, is that what you're saying? Advocacy and networking, all under Cafe Onda. Yes. Okay. Great. I think that networking and mentorship. Networking and mentorship as it's uh. So, uh, Luis, you just said, and more, you, you said scholarship and mentorship together. Well, I just really and agree so that I actually think that maybe a scholarship and mentorship really do live side by side. Because right. They're really building an intellectual idea, but also a, a building of a kind of uh, thinking around our, our field. Great. Luis? I mean, art making and the creation of new works that serve as the foundation of Latino theater. Artworks, so I'm going to ask you this then, right? So for... The creation of new works. The creation of new works. So can we agree then that festivals, in the, in, for the sake of this conversation, that part of what the festivals are going to be about is what you just said? <coughs> art working in the creation of new works? Art making in the creation of new works? Can we agree to, can we agree that we heard that from that? I think group? it's something separate. Yeah? yeah. Something separate? Yeah. Okay, so that's our fourth, that's our fourth platform, our fourth pillar. Right? We're staying with the theme of four. Okay? That's okay. So art making, let's fill that in. Art making and the creation of new work. That's right. I mean, the, the English theater thrives on Shakespeare, even after 400 years. You know? Right, right. So, and, and we need enough Latino works to sustain the identity of the theater. Because we also acknowledged yesterday, in my act of listening, what we all acknowledged was that we're just a drop in the bucket. This, is, this thing is just beginning. Right. Right? Right. We said that yesterday. So... That's why that's a platform. Great. Okay, so we've established our four. That happened a lot quicker than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> Convenience belongs the festival for the sake of this conversation. I wonder if you might put convenings as the top, the head, the heading, because festivals are convening. Yes. yes. It's not the other way around. That's an interesting point. Uh, a 
my screen, you know, I just like slide it over, right? If I did my Tom Cruise in the, that movie, you know, I just like, uh, put it in the parking lot. So, uh, right. yes, yes, Olga. The, the Cafe Onda is a, it's a forum. So it's a forum for advocacy, it's a forum for scholarship, it's a forum for art making, it's a forum for, I mean, so I would say that Cafe Onda, like, Yes, yes, yes. So this is the next part, exactly. We, we, we knew we were gonna get to here, so we're, we're right where we are. So the thing is, the thing is, now on the Cafe Onda, what can we say from what we've heard all across? Because we just said, hey, this is all across. We have all these strategies that we've outlined. There's a lot of overlap. If we can put it, some of that in this one bucket, what would it be? What would be those things? From the, from the strategies we heard, this is like a pop quiz. Were you really listening to what was up here so that we can then begin to put some of these vast. I have the list of, of all the different um, internships of different universities that are, that are good for training for Latino artists consolidation of that information which is tangible right now, that's a thing that can happen that coincides with some of this. We're just trying to will it down. That's all we're trying to do. This is not definitive. This is just step number two towards the end. It has profiles of artists, scholars uh, in the field. The directory. Um, directors. The mentors. directory. A profile. Yeah, something that could be, again, data that already exists, right? This is a practical thing, I see you, in terms of, and we can begin to consolidate that on the Cafe Onda. Now remember, I also want to put this back out there and remind everybody that we're going to ask you, right, the reason why we're doing this, we're going to ask you to find your way into these things, right? That's the next step. So as we're saying, though, be as grand as you need to or as practical as you need to, but then also think about your role and relationship to whatever ends up on here, okay? Yes? Uh, just in the spirit of sharing information, we can have it on the, the platform to do that. Uh, Tanya Saracho in our Wisdom Group program shared a wonderful example about how she applied for a grant, then she got feedback from Diane, and then she redid the grant, and I thought that was a really kind of cool case study that might be useful to use Cafe Onda in that way to put like kind of transparent case study information of like best practices. Like here's an example of what not to do Were you guys in different groups? Were you were, were you and Karen in the same group or different groups? Same group. So best practices and case studies. And that could be, again, blogs. That could be stuff that's documented by scholarship. David? I, I identify real value with this as a, a platform to bring blue collar theater artists in the same company as large universities and institutions and funders. Okay, well, uh, so pack that a little bit, right? Uh, in the context of Cafe Onda, or are you moving to the next, um, the next bucket, which is scholarship mentorship? Well, I, I guess I'm kind of relating Cafe Onda with Latino Theater Commons, because right here we have United Universities, we have universities, we also have foundations, and we have the blue collar artists. And it seems like we're all in the same room, and it's such a unique opportunity, and it seems like Cafe, Cafe Onda can be a platform. No. I'm going to also slide that into the parking lot because I, you know, well, I'm, I want to hear strategy and I don't hear strategy. So to think about that in terms of something specific that uh, uh, the consolidation of data is a strategy, right? Okay. So, so you know, you know what I'm saying, like Diane. So, Clyde, I think that um, and that you, you're parking the idea of Think Cafe on the in all four categories. And I think you should park it in all four. And I think you should put mentorship in all four. And then, there, therefore, you have the headings advocacy, networking, scholarship, convening, and art making. Very clear. And through all of them, Cafe Onda affects all of them, and mentorship is in all of them.
Okay, can I hear? That's an idea. Second. That's an idea. So, Second. so you know, I'm not doing it. We're doing it, right? So I'm going to revive what you just said. So, that everyone heard what Diane just said? Yes. 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 You know, so we build that consensus in this process, and then we we'll, re we'll remix it. So Lisa, and then Alex. Then of I want to bring to the table an idea that Luke Moreno came up with or discussed in our wisdom group earlier. I don't exactly know where it goes, but I do it goes under scholarship or advocacy networking. And this is the establishment, you have the O'Neill Institute, the establishment of the Fortnite Institute for training and art making and a specific space where uh, the Fortnite library a place where her plays are, where plays by her people that she mentored are, and where they mentor. Okay, so that that sounds like it should go. Okay, okay. Nobody's yelling. We're talking. That's how we talk. Yes. that will link people who uh, don't uh, have ready access to resources through institutional frameworks. I'm using so much bullshit language that I hate right now, but just bear with me. Um, that, that, that don't necessarily have um, ready access to resources through institutional frameworks like academia um, and, uh, and other more traditional frameworks to be a place where, where, where all artists, regardless of blue collar or, or any other background, international artists, can go and access resources Thank readily. You. Does that work as a strategy? Uh, does that work as a strategy? Because at this point, we're talking to each other. So does, do we hear that? Because she's ripping off of what David said about access for folks who essentially don't have or come out of institutions. Right, who don't come out of formal training, right? That's what you're part in part what you're saying, no, David. No, no? I say blue collar. I, I, I mean, I mean, we're educated, but we're we're like nose of the grindstone, working every day, and we don't necessarily have uh, access to uh, foundations and universities, publishing universities, all kinds of access to universities. For example, Emerson has so uh, provided so much of its resources, but I, David Lozano, don't have access to that. But through the Commons and Capitola, maybe I do. And so yes. this gathering has allowed me to have some sort of access to that. And so yeah. that's, what I'm, that's what I'm thinking, Kevin. It's getting clearer, it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, just give us a second. We have Octavia, then we'll go Kevin. Um, I think uh, we need to build up our canon. I think there's a lot of work that we already have as theater artists, but we still need to build up our canon. And uh, to serve that, this is kind of a suggestion for like a mix between art making and convenings. But I love a convenings of writers. Get writers together in order to work together. Give each other exercises. Um, this, I guess, ties in really well with the uh, for, with the Fortness Institute because yeah. it would be a great yeah. place where we could do a retreat. We could all gather there, sleep together. Well, maybe not sleep together, <laughs> but you know, sleep sleep in the uh, you know stay in stay in the same on the grounds. You know, I, I just came out from Marfa, Texas, where. We, uh, I stayed at El Cosmico with Eric Ann and Virginia Grace and G Grace uh, and, uh, it w and and other writers and musicians and uh, poets, and it was amazing because we all hung out together, we cooked together, and then we shared work. We even gave each other exercises, um, and so I, I, I think uh, I'd like to propose something like that, like a festival of writers. But there's there's no presentation, no actors, no directors, no production. Just yeah, no get together and write. Oh, I, oh no! But I love actors. I love actors. I want actors to be involved too. Actors, actors as creators, you know. That's right. Thank you. I mean, I, not that I want to cut you off, but we, we do want to kind of get to some things in it. And there's a crystallization of something, right? So we're riffing off of each other, and that's the point of this. So we can crystallize, and then what we're gonna have to do sometimes 
to support us as co-facilitators in shepherding all of you and all of us towards the next phase of this particular process is sometimes repeat or slow down so we can do our best to notate and get to where we need to get to. Kevin. Yeah, so I think Cafe Onda is a mapping. It can be a mapping of shared resources, right? So on Cafe Onda, almost like when you go to Craigslist or FreeCycle and you find out where, the, where different opportunities are and where different things are available, you can say on Cafe Onda, oh, I work at Art Summerson and so I have these five spaces available to me when they are available. Hey, this week in November, nothing's in the black box, so why don't we see, it? does anybody want to come use it? You know, so, so, and that can work in grants, that can work in, you know, reading opportunities, X, Y, Z. I just want to remind everyone that Maria Irene Fornes was also a director, and she was the director of own work, which is really important, and I think uh, as directors we are, uh, I think we need to develop the next generation of interpretive artists, and I think that as directors we can find our voices in networking and developing and understanding what an aesthetic is in terms of working with Latino plays in the convenings through the Fornes Institute through, uh, through Café Onda and having those discussions that way, so. Thank you, Talala. It's David, Enrique, you're gonna come after Richard and then we'll go back to Diane. <coughs> Diane, so David, Richard, Diane, Lisa. Yeah, I'm putting this out there, this may be, I, I don't know if this applies, but uh, um, each uh, region or locale creates their own advocacy plan and that it links to a national advocacy yes. plan. Sure, that each locale and region develops its own advocacy plan and that it links to a national advocacy plan. Thank you for, uh, for, for, for saying that because earlier, uh, I believe it was Mark Valdez who talked about the micro, the net micro fest. And he said, it, he said that their goal was to uh, work regionally to have impact nationally. So I want to underscore that and reiterate it because you just... You just did that, David, so thank you, right? So I just, wherever I can, I'm gonna connect those dots because that's in part our charge as well. So we got Richard, then we're gonna come back to Diane, and then we got Lisa. Now this is the thing, we just heard on Twitter because there's a conversation happening while this conversation is happening, right? That they're asking us to talk in the mic, which is why I got the, the mic back of my hand because they wanna hear us because they're a part of this conversation. So this is what we're gonna do. We got a second mic over here. We're gonna leave it in the back. I'm gonna ask for one person to help move that mic around 
towards the back end of the room. Is that cool? Thank you. Yeah, uh, I was wondering, why do we need cannons? I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, not cannons, not violent cannons, cannons, we need cannons. Uh, but um, on uh, following up uh, on Octavio, and I don't know where it might belong, convening advocacy, but there's a great term that we all learned uh, at, at the NEA, which where I'll be at the end of the month, but peer review without cheesement and with, you know, is it there, peer review? Writers getting together, peers, our peers review honesty. Uh, without chisme, bochinche, or daggers. So a question to the group, is, is peer review, does that live in art making? For the sake of this conversation today, art making, do we have consensus? Can we hear yes? Yes. yes. That's a pretty, uh, okay, good. Hold on, hold on, hold up on this side. And scholarship, so let's put it on the boat. Thank you, let's put it on the boat. So then Diane, Lisa, and then we'll come back to this side of the room. I saw a couple of hands. Juliet, for Diane, Lisa, Juliet. I'm sorry, really quickly. So peer review of work? Yes. 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 For both. Great. Could be both. So I, I just want I'm a little lost um, because we, ha we heard some amazing things that people are proposing, <laughs> and now we're proposing more, and that's confusing. I would, would really love to hear what resonated with people today of what we heard because people took some time and thought into what was presented and I think it'd be cool to hear what resonates. I, 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 so I'm, I'm, so I'm well, you know, th Thank you because I thought that's what we were doing here, not necessarily only introducing new ideas but actually you know, based upon what we heard, putting them in buckets. Right, and then you know, so that's part of the charge. So, you know, forgive me if if you if you feel like that's not happening, but that should be happening here, right? So, it's you're right. People did put in some work. So, what's again? So then, to ask that question, what's what did we hear that resonated? That's not here that we need to put on here because that's really what we have to do. Yes. Thank you. Let's put that up there. Um, uh, Lisa, and then Julia, and then Olga, and then we'll come back over here. I just wanted to pick up on two ideas that I heard come out that didn't quite get captured. One is Kevin Becerra's idea, which is, um, uh, this goes under advocacy and networking, which is a resource board. Yeah, essentially a resource board or free cycle. Yeah, uh, where we can uh, pool resources and people can use them. And the other one was Tlaloc's idea, goes under art making, development of Latino directors. There's not enough of us, Latino and Latina directors. Okay, uh, where would that go? Art making. Okay, so Juliet, Olga, and then we'll come back to this side of the room. And I am on the side, I moved over. Oh, you're over there, okay, Juliet. Um, yesterday, Magdalia brought up this idea of, of the safe house, where are you? Where's Magdalia? Oh, okay. Okay, so safe house, a place to develop work that is um, completely safe. And, uh, and I'm thinking maybe there's, we start with uh, safe rooms, and we start with salons, or salon. Oh. Um, where people gather okay. in their communities and in a safe environment develop and devise. So my... Mm. Uh, and that could be under Cornest too. Could be under Cornest right, too. right. So that's, that's part of it because you know, I want to acknowledge, I see you, bro. We're going to get to you, Olga, and then we'll get back over here. Yeah. So, um, so the idea, and hopefully uh, I can frame this correctly, is that um, Arts Emerson has been such a fabulous partner and collaborator on bringing us together here um, that we wanted to approach them about continuing that collaboration and that they're building this magnificent building in uh, Hollywood in, in Los Angeles and that um, as far as I can tell 
they are starting to look at what kinds of programs will be uh, housed there. And so a very practical and I think strategic um, uh, recommendation for us to come up with as a group is to absolutely applaud the, the um, partnership and the collaboration from Emerson that has been shown so far, but to take it to the next level and say the Latino Commons should be a program of the new campus for Los An in, of Emerson in Los Angeles where there's so much art making taking place among our community. So that's the story. Yes. I just really wanted to back what David said about this regional advocacy plan, which links to a national plan. I think that's the key to this whole thing, personally, because I think you start grassroots because it, we're so diverse and there's so many places around the country that every spot has its own plan, which then links to the, the larger idea, which is the community. And, and that takes care of Emerson in LA and yeah and a peer review here and a safe house over here that may be right for you but it's not right for me and all these sorts of things we're talking about that are swirling around you know we have to respect the pockets but then also have the national idea behind it so to me david's like huge that's right on man that, that's it that's the key to this whole thing and and you know part of what's going to happen when we come back and i see Anne and i see sandra um is that we were gonna then go from, okay, how does this, how is this applicable on a national level? How is it applicable on a regional level? How is it applicable on a local level? How is it applicable on an individual level, right? So to underscore what Diane said, because you know, I think this was important, and uh, you know, I, I wasn't just kidding when I said it was a pop quiz, you know, we did want to distill what was layered behind these ideas. So I'm gonna ask that as opposed to just, you know, instituting new things, that we respect what was back here because we were all listening actively and we begin to, under these buckets that we did agree on, advocacy, networking, scholarship, convenings, and art making, we did agree that certain things cross all of those buckets that we also agree to pull out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask that everyone who's in a scholarship or in a group, think about what you came up with because you came up here and did a presentation. So we're gonna go over here to Anne, Sandra, and then we'll come back over here. Anne, yes. I just want to make sure we had the detail on the, on the festival. So if we could put the um, LATC Encuentro and the DePaul uh, New Work Carnaval. Something that really stuck out to me is the one-on-one, -on -one, the individual, and something that we can all do today um, is that everyone leaves the room with a mentor and a mentee. I think that would go under advocacy and networking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, over here, there's a mic over there. Hi, I'm Regina. Um, I think our group, and I thought that this was extremely important, to infiltrate existing national programs by deliberate participation. Deliberate participation. Is that advocacy? Yep. That sounds like advocacy. So I think we need another piece of paper. So just, can you hold on to that so I can get to it again? Yes. That, that, I think, is important because that is, I think, I think that that is important because it includes things like the New Play Network, like NET, like applying, like NPN. like NPN, like applying for the MAP grant, like be, be, uh, being part of Creative Capital. I mean, the list goes on and on. Really, really deliberately infiltrating those existing programs nationally. That's, that's a small yet profound and incredibly powerful thing, right? Acknowledge, let's acknowledge that, right? I was struck that there was a handful of people that got up uh, with the MPN, right? We talked about it, it was just a handful of folks. You're commissioning, Talalak, we heard that. That's, that's a tangible thing. But you know, I was like, wow, right? Um, okay, so we're coming to a, a, a close on this, and I wanna acknowledge, this is gonna be hard. We talked about it, you know, we were like, oh, we're gonna get to this place. This is the, uh, the home stretch, right? 
Um, so what we're gonna do now is, before, we're gonna head into a break, but you're not gonna get up just yet. Um, but what we're gonna do now is we'll head into that break. We're gonna caucus a little bit. I'm gonna ask you guys to caucus a little bit, you know, because this is the comments. Have conversations during this break. Um, and think about following Diane's suggestion. Uh, and Mika, you have something back there, right? Yes, okay, Micah. Quick. Mike, Mike Micah, Mike Espinosa. My Ooh, bad. It's bright. Um, so I had two thoughts. One was that um, we need to expand our definition of developing Latino theater artists because we need to help develop those actors, those scholars as well, because we can create as much art as we want, and if it's not documented, you know, so that's really important that we expand that definition. And the, I am so fired up by this idea of the uh, Emerson in LA, but I also have a slight reservation because it's a national convening and it, it could be very LA centric. And so I think about the Royal Mexican players and the good work that they're doing in Milwaukee and uh, the, the, what we heard uh, from our uh, brothers and sisters in Florida about feeling isolated. And so I think we need to uh, be careful with that. Yeah. Oh, We're, we're, we're meeting in New England now. We, we're, we're, we're potentially meeting in Los Angeles uh, in a year. Then we're going to Chicago. What's to say that we can't have a convening around Mario Ernesto's festival, yeah. right? What's to say that we can't, you know, what's to say we can't do something in New York, right? We just heard some incredible news from Rosalba, right? About some stuff that's going down. So, uh, you know, this isn't the time to edit. This is the time to build. Right, this isn't the time for limitations. This is the time to realize and put words out there that have meaning and power because that's what we have all acknowledged on this board. Arizona. All right, so I need you guys to take this break. I need you to do some caucusing. I need you to respect the fact that we broke up into these groups so we can come up with some strategies and there's some real clear strategies out here. So as, as advocates, all of us, you know, come back with a few points because we're going to ask for points. Not new ideas, but points that are already here, right? And I'm going to pass the mic to Olga because there is a fun thing that's going to happen too. I hope you think this, I hope you feel this is fun, yeah. right? Because, you know, this is why I do what I do, right? So here. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so much fun. <laughs> Please. Okay. Uh, now I'm confused. La Mica, verdad? It's 50-50, right? Mica. Mica Espinosa y Marcos Najera. After a, like a pause, like a 10 to 15 minutes, is inviting you, are inviting you, to go down. So you got like 10, 15 minutes of a break. You're going to do it here, not downstairs? No, we moved all the chairs and tables, so we're going to do it right here. Wow. We flow. Um, so you just have to go out into the lobby and they are going to lead you, guide you, inspire you through the most amazing physical expression of I'm not going to tell you what because that way you'll go there and check it out. But, it's, but, but, but. It has to do with mentorship. Now you told them. <laughs> all good, all good. Well, that's what I meant. It was a, it, so now you know, mentorship. So it, it, so, which means, and Cafe Onda, it underscores everything. And one more thing, if there, if there are things that, that, that resonate for you, come up and circle them. That'll be really, really helpful to us in our process. So grab a marker and circle some of the strategies that have some resonance. Thank you. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Maybe more. <laughs> 